All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing another Western novel, and this is The Sand, no, In the, in the Sand and wind in sand in the wind you know i let's see what is it sand in the wind yeah the way that they've got the type here i don't know i guess it's yeah sand and it confuses the out of me but anyway let's talk about this kathleen o'neill gear one of my favorite writers of all time one of my favorite western novelists one of my favorite science fiction novelists just one of my favorite novelists of all. I've got every book she's ever written. And, uh, you know, actually I've met her and she signed some of my science fiction books. You can see the signatures there. But she wrote one of my favorite science fiction trilogies right here, which I have been reading and reviewing for the channel also. She also um, collaborated with her husband, um, W. Michael Gear for the People of the Wolf series of like some 30-odd books. And uh, probably the most popular things that they've done. But anyway, let's talk about Sand and the Wind. Cover first. The book came out in 1990. One of their one of her first ever books written. Um, the cover is by Louis Royo, and now Louis Royo did a lot of their covers. He did a, most of their um, People of the Wolf series covers. Uh, He's a great artist. I really like his stuff. It's got, uh, you know, this wonderful painting of our main characters out in the Western landscape, and it wraps around, and we've got the wolf on the back. It's just cool. It's a dope cover. I like it. The dude is awesome. Anyway, so the book starts out <clears throat> with a character named Wounded Bear. Now, bear with me. No, not I didn't mean to... Wounded Bear... Please bear with me. I've got my notes here, but since my vision is getting worse and worse over time, and if you want to know why, just type in my last name and the word blind, and I did a whole video on why, how, how I'm slowly going blind. But anyway, so just to know in the future, a lot of my reviews, I'm probably going to have to hold my notes really close to my face just to do the review. But anyway, um, so it, we're starting. It's, I've been doing that on a few of the reviews, but let's... Uh, Let's just talk about this book. So it's a little awkward this way, though, but I don't know how else to do it um, other than memorize my notes. And we all know that's not going to happen at all. Okay. So, um, or try to remember what happened in the book well enough without the notes, but we all know that my memory is also, you know, I'm getting to be an old man. Let's just say. Okay, enough about me. Wounded Bear. He's a Cheyenne warrior. There's a prologue in this. He's a Cheyenne warrior in the Bighorn Mountains. He sees visions of a white woman that's going to come out and sort of save their, um, save his tribe. So um, that's how we start. Now we get to the uh, main character, Colleen, who is depicted there on the cover in the yellow dress. And she is drawn to the West by dreams she has of this handsome Indian warrior. And she follows her... So when her abusive husband says we're going out west, she follows him because uh, of the dreams. Now, her husband is an abusive guy, yeah. And so he becomes our main antagonist throughout the uh, series. Uh, she's the protagonist. He's the antagonist. And he is an abusive guy. He is not a nice dude. But she follows him out west because of her dreams. Then along we comes to another character named Lieutenant Matthew Douglas, who is a cavalry officer. From the Civil War, he, um, uh, you know, he joins up with this westward trek, and he falls in love with um, Colleen, of course. So now we've got a love triangle be, be between the handsome uh, lieutenant and the uh, abusive husband and Miss Colleen there, um, and we can see uh, the main characters here. We've got the warrior that she dreams of. We've got her. And then the, the, then, then the cavalry officer back there. And the wagon train that they're all going across in. So anyway, um, so uh, that's the basic story. How, you know, is, is she going to make it to this uh, promised land and this, uh, this uh, 
uh, Cheyenne warrior that she's seeing dreams of? Is the is the Cheyenne warrior who also dreams of her? Are they going to meet? What's going to happen? Is she going to help save the tribe? It's kind of got like a Dances with Wolves feel to it. Um, a little bit where a uh, white person comes in to, um, you know, live amongst the natives and um, do good things kind of a thing. Um, but it's more grim and brutal than Dances with Wolves in that uh, these... One of the things we learn about in the, as we read this book is the, um, and these are some of the notes I took on stuff that I learned and stuff that I kind of took from this is those, um, so the, um, the Western expansion along the already established trails that the Indians had already made, um, so the Indians made trails all across the United States that they used for travel, and that's kind of, those are the trails that the Western wagon trains often typically used and so a lot of the game the buffalo the deer the um the bat ev everything that could be killed and eaten along those trails was starting to be depleted along those trails not only that but the forests i mean the the, the wa these wagon trains would just come through and cut down trees at you know and uh, so it was just really wreaking havoc um along these trails, depleting just the forest land and the game along these trails. Um, also, the um, some of these wagon trains were bringing weapons with them that the natives had not seen before. You know, of course, there's guns and horses and, and uh, different ways of fighting, but some of the wagon trains actually carried along some of these Civil War cannons and, and uh, Civil War howitzer machine guns that, that would be mounted in the back of the wagons. And this was really, really frightening to the uh, native peoples. And, um, I mean, it was almost horror. It's like horror movie frightening to them. And just to be, up, to come up against some of this type of weaponry. And, um, but, you know, they started fighting back. You know, uh, they, didn't, they didn't go peacefully. And that's kind of the theme of this book is how they sort of, the uh, natives sort of started fighting back and regaining some ground for a bit of time. Um, they started winning some of these battles uh, just by sheer um, outnumbering the people that they were going against. Um, anyway, just a great, great Western novel. And, and, and one of the things about the Kathleen O'Neill gear and the W. Michael gear books is they are, um, you know, they have college degrees and they have spent years and years as professionals in the field of, you know, studying the Native American peoples and, and going to archaeological digs and, and and doing all the stuff that really gives them a leg up, not just a leg up, but just it gives them the expertise to write these kind of stories with authenticity. And it's, it's just cool. Not only is it cool for the Western novels, but they also use a lot of their experience in their science fiction novels, too. Which makes the science fiction novels they write pretty damn fucking dope. Anyway, so I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. It was a very enjoyable Western adventure. Um, had lots of action and adventure. Characters that you root for, characters that you hate. Just a great story. So uh, there you go.